too many posts. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these posts. Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. Man, there was a lot more this last week in terms of updates for Power BI from admin to gateway to just other stuff. So if you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Reed Havens over at Havens Consulting has a video slash, uh, technically it's a blog, but it's really a video on how to actually create a heat map in a table. This could be really useful for you if you want to actually visualize the weight of items based on color. And so you can get that visual heat map going from a lighter color to a darker color in the spread of your columns and rows. The magic sauce here is conditional formatting, but I won't give all of it away. Be sure to check out the video to actually see how he accomplished this. It was it was a pretty neat trick. Chris Webb's got a blog post looking at one of the new items that came out in the last week, which is skip test connection. And so skip test connection allows you to do a lot more. One of the challenges with the Power BI service when dealing with connections to either cloud sources or on-prem sources is it will always try and test the connection from the service side of the house. Chris points out a scenario where this actually ended up in a potential failure. He had a workaround from a Power Query perspective trying to connect to a URL, but allowing the skip test connection actually allows it to succeed because we're not going to validate it at the time of creating the credentials or from testing from a gateway perspective. So this will actually work when we go to refresh, but it would fail from a test connection perspective. So the skip test connection is really, really cool and allows you to enable a lot more scenarios where you couldn't have before. Another scenario where this came up a lot was if you're trying to do VNet type connections, it would work from the gateway, but if you tried to test the connection initially from the Power BI service, the service would never be able to reach it directly. So, so if you've run into this scenario before, be sure to check out this blog post. Links as always down in the description below, along with all the items for this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. I mentioned at the beginning that there were just a ton of items that came out this last week. I couldn't fit them all in this week's roundup, so be sure to check out the description below in the bonus links. I've, I've got everything that was announced from a Power BI side down in the description, so be sure to check that part out. Another item that was part of the announcements was query caching for Power BI Premium. So if you're using Premium, this could help you in terms of speeding up report loading because we've already cached results of specific queries that were made. The capacity administrator can set a default for the entire capacity or the owner of a given data set can actually choose to override the default and either have it off altogether or to have it on. So if you're running into report performance issues, this may be an option for you if you're running on premium that could help speed up the load of reports. You may have heard me talk before about the Power Platform Admin Center, and this is a way that you can get insights into your gateways that you're using with Power BI or across the Power Platform. There was an update that came out this last week that allows tenant admins to go in and see all of their personal gateways that are in their infrastructure organization. So now you can control and have governance around gateway creation. The ability to control who can actually install an on-premises data gateway in enterprise mode is available with inside of the UI. So this is awesome. We can actually control you know, who's actually creating these gateways as well as see and give visibility into how many are actually out there in my, my organization. So the Power Platform Admin Center is getting there, baby steps, baby steps. New stuff is getting added, which is awesome and gives you a lot more control, governance, flexibility, all that good stuff. For more info, check out the blog, you know where, down below. All right, the home area inside of Power BI, maybe some of you have used it, maybe some of you have been like, eh, not a whole lot there. It does show you frequently used items. It's really cool for quickly getting access to content with inside of Power BI. The big announcement is that the home area is now generally available. So that little preview moniker next to home, it's out of here. Getting rid of that preview moniker and making it generally available is awesome as always with any feature. But the big thing in here is at the bottom of this blog post where it talks about the future of home. A couple of things highlighted inside of what's coming for home is branding. So like company branding for the actual home 
area in the Power BI landing page as a whole. It mentions promoted content, so you can actually promote content that maybe is important for your organization. And also that learning resources section that's down at the bottom, you'll be able to configure that as well. So if you have specific training content within your organization, you can just plop it right there on the home screen. So lots of cool stuff coming for the home area inside of Power BI. I'm excited about it. Check out the blog post down below. All right, we got an updated PowerShell commandlet for duplicating your Power BI workspaces. So there's been great stuff happening with the Power BI PowerShell commandlets. Make sure you're updated to the latest version. And then inside of the GitHub repo for that, there are example scripts that are available to you. One of those is the ability to duplicate content from one workspace to another. So it'll take care of all the copying of those reports, data sets, dashboards, tiles, all of it. From what I can tell, I haven't spent a whole lot of time digging into it, but it doesn't look like it's a full like ALM type script, but it will allow you to easily duplicate that workspace if you need to. So just be aware that it's not necessarily gonna delete old content and or you know there may be some other items there that don't fall in from an ALM standpoint, but if you're just looking to duplicate content from one workspace to another, the script should have you covered. And also just playing around with the PowerShell commandlets is pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Remember to check out that bonus section for all the updates that happened last week. Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.